Hello, this is Chris Thoreau from Farm Folk City Folk and the Bauda Family Initiative on Canadian Seed Security. And I'm happy to present this tutorial video for our seed production enterprise budget uh, developed by my colleague, Shauna McKinnon and myself and built on the work of Richard Wiswall, author of the Organic Farmer's Business Handbook and Dan Brisebois, who's the author of Crop Planning for Vegetable Growers and a seed grower extraordinaire at Ferme Tournesol in Quebec, Canada. The spreadsheet's uh, development was further supported by UBC Farm, where we first tested the model, and by several seed growers here in BC who were really actively testing the model and are working with us right now. So this model is, uh, was developed as part of the BC Seed Trials, which is a collaboration between Farm Folk City Folk and the University of British Columbia, which is conducting participatory variety trials on farms throughout BC in an effort to engage farmers in seed focused research and identify vegetable varieties which perform best in each region, as well as those varieties which may be good candidates for scaling up for bulk seed production. So this screencast tutorial uh, is going to present an overview of the spreadsheet just to start and we're going to cover just an overview of the worksheets and, and how they work within the spreadsheet. We're going to look at the different types of cells you'll come across in the spreadsheet. We're going to review the comments that appear throughout the spreadsheet and then we're just going to review some of the calculations and connections between the sheets that you may come across uh, as you're going through this uh, enterprise budget. This spreadsheet is uh, available online. We host it on um, Google Sheets. So it is an online version that we can edit and uh, support you with once you're using it. So you can find it on our website at bcseeds.org. Uh, this version here uh, that you can link to, you can't edit. You can copy it into a new spreadsheet and make your own version. So let's go take a look at the spreadsheet uh, and do an overview uh, so you know what to expect when you start to use it. The Enterprise Budget Spreadsheet is made up of numerous worksheets, which you can switch between here at the bottom of your screen. So each worksheet here represents a specific area of overall crop production activities with a number of reference worksheets, which are also included at the end. You'll notice in the worksheet tabs here, these little black um, icons, these uh, indicate that there are comments within the worksheets. These comments give tips and directions to using the spreadsheet and can be very useful reminders for how to use things as you move along. There are a few different types of cells to be aware of in the spreadsheet. In short, the green cells here indicate user input cells. These are the ones that uh, you can put your information into. And the cells in the light orange indi indicate uh, formulas that self-populate. So as a general rule, you do not want to change these cells because changing these cells can have impacts elsewhere in the spreadsheet. If you are very familiar with spreadsheets and feel comfortable doing so, the, none of these cells are protected, so you're welcome to make whatever changes uh, you want. You'll also see some of these info cells like this, and this is just a place you can hover over to see the comments there that just give you some ideas about the uh, worksheet that you're looking at. The gray cells like this are for labels, and labels can be changed in any way uh, to fit any language or wording that you use um, when you're working on the spreadsheet. There is one exception to the color rule I want to point out. In the crop production cells, in the sales projections area down at the bottom, these orange cells, in short, they autofill from data that's input earlier in the spreadsheet, but they can be changed as needed. So we'll cover that in more detail when we get to that uh, screencast, but for now, just keep that in mind. So now that you're familiar with the different types of cells and the overall layout of the spreadsheet, let's take a look at the individual worksheets. The first worksheet in the spreadsheet is the preparation checklist. This is optional, but I use it when I'm working with farmers to go through the spreadsheet together. This gives them a chance to gather some information and put it in here before it's added to the rest of the spreadsheet. This just helps make things a little quicker if we're going through the uh, spreadsheet one-on-one. -on -one. So this covers some of your bed info, your wage levels, your overhead, 
some of the structures and then getting a sense of the crops you want to work with to put them into the budget here. You can see as we talked about there's comments spaced throughout here to give you tips and hints as you fill it out. Our second worksheet is our notes and bed, bed details. So this is the first one where we're actually entering information into the spreadsheet that is going to affect calculations later. Here you're just adding your bed info, which includes the bed length and width, and the number of acres you have in production. So what this does is it uh, gives you a sense of how many beds are on the farm, and then this information is used to distribute the overhead costs of running the farm among the growing beds on the farm. Your overhead costs are basically those costs you incur whether you plant a crop or not, and they need to be considered in your production costs. That's the worksheet we're going to look at next. The farm overhead worksheet is important as it calculates the expenses that get spread throughout your whole farm, so your overhead costs can be considered in the cost to produce each crop. It essentially has four sections. The wages section at the top, your non-production farm costs in the middle here, at the end there is some administration costs, and at the end it's the distribution of costs between your greenhouses and your growing beds. Wages at the top can be set to three different levels depending on the labor types you have, and they include calculations for mandatory payroll deductions, insurance, and non-assigned or idle time, which can be changed here. Section two is the non-production farm costs, which include all the non-production related costs on the farm, such as rent or lease payments, insurance, website, and others that are on the list here. Be sure to include as many items as you can to make this as accurate as possible and change the labels as needed. Administration costs down below account for non-crop production activities on the farm, such as bookkeeping, ordering, marketing, and other things that don't take place in the field. At the end is the growing bed and greenhouse cost allocation section to allocate these costs between growing beds and greenhouses based on the percentage of area each takes up on your farm. The output values down here in cells um, C41 and C42 will now be assigned to each standard bed equivalent that you grow based on the bed information you entered in the previous worksheet. The greenhouse and isolation structure worksheet is to be used if you are growing any seed crops within a structure and need to account for the costs of putting up that structure and maintaining it. The top section here is for your structure costs, which include materials and building it, and it amortizes the different components over a different time period to give you a cost per year for that structure. Down below are annual maintenance and setup costs. For smaller structures that get moved from year to year, this accounts for that time, as well as any damage repair and any cleaning you need to do. Both of these sections are totaled at the bottom, and you can further adjust this worksheet to account for just using a percentage of the space if it is being shared with other crops. The crop production worksheets are very detailed and is where you will spend most of your time when using this spreadsheet model. It is broken into several sections as well. The top section here is for your crop information, including the crop name, your yields, your seeding and bed rates, and other details about planting. You can see the wages we put in earlier are also here for reference. The second section is our input costs. Here we put on our labor and materials that are used to produce the crop using estimates or exact numbers we pull from recording during the season. These summarize by each section and then total at the end. This section is designed for both annual and biennial crops. The third section creates reports based on the information you input above. It's, it does a general report here on the left, giving you different yields per gram, per plant, and other values within the spreadsheet. And on the right, gives you some income estimators based on different harvests and different selling prices. The next section helps you calculate your value from sales. It helps break things into different markets 
different sizes and different prices, and then gives you a chance to assign different projected sales to different markets and sizes. This is then summarized below with some extra summaries happening below that. This spreadsheet or this worksheet is where you will spend most of your time, so it is one that is very important to get familiar with. You will notice along the bottom that we have six of these worksheets. So as the model stands now, you can use it for six different crops. However, another worksheet can easily be added and you can put as many crops in here as you want. That way you can get an estimate of values for all the crops you are growing. The final worksheets in this spreadsheet are your reference sheets. This includes references for greenhouse flat costs, seed crop yields, row and plant spacing, packet size and price examples, and labor examples. So let's take a quick look at those now. The greenhouse flat reference sheet is good if you're doing transplants and want to include the soil and time it takes to prep a tray into that calculation. This is broken down by different types of trays you may use on your farm. The seed crop yield guidelines are useful for growing a crop that you don't have any data for to at least give you a projected estimate of what you can expect for a yield. It's broken down in yield per acre and thousand square feet in both pounds and kilograms, and also in yield per 100 foot row in grams at the end here. The row and plant spacing calculator can be useful if you're trying to determine what the cost of seed was to plan, plant a specific area. This also gives you a thousand seed weight, which is a characteristic often given for seeds. This spreadsheet will be filled in with examples of packet sizes and prices. So when you're doing your calculations, you at least have specific references for specific crops to give you a sense of how accurate your projections can be. The labor example spreadsheet will give you a, a bit of information to determine how long does it take to weed a 100 foot bed or how long does it take to till a 200 foot bed. This would be a good reference if you don't remember the exact uh, input hours for your crops, but want to produce a good estimate. So that covers all the worksheets within the Seed Production Enterprise Budget Spreadsheet. I hope you found that a useful overview, and we will follow up with more detailed screencast videos for each of the worksheets in time. Once again, you can find the spreadsheet online at bcseeds.org and follow the link there. And we hope you find it useful. Feel free to leave comments on the master spreadsheet if you've come across any calculation errors or any improvements you think might be useful to share with others. And if you're wondering about the photo in the background, because I know this has been nagging at you, um, that is a golden beet seed crop we harvested a few years in Jilliwack. So once again, thanks for taking a look. We hope you find this tool useful and we look forward to working with you in the future.